Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Allison. How are you? Just fine. We barely made that cut off. Right? You don't <laughs> want to hear me sing. <laughs> so our new, uh, our new um, tradition, you know, do something yeah. embarrassing right up until the moment that it starts. And uh, very second. <laughs> Oh, well, how's it going? Oh, it's going. It's been um, good morning. Hi. Um, it's been good. Uh, we're, we've we've got a few more staff back at the library now, which is very exciting. Um, most every most everyone is back, and um, next week we're expanding our hours a little bit. Um, so yeah, lots of good, lots of good stuff happening right now. Yeah, expansion of hours. I will say the flip side to the expansion of hours is that I no longer am going to have the building to myself on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, well, and not specific, not just me, but tech services. So my yeah. coworker and I, we, we revel in that silence. <laughs> and so now it's not. Not like we work with noisy people or there's just something about you know Sound echoes in that building God. you've got the ceilings that are so high mm -hmm. the cement floors and the ceiling yes. is metal yes. so it's just like sound yes. echoes in that building yeah. and i don't know that i've ever told you then about how though we get a cricket <laughs> every <laughs> year at some point we'll get at least one cricket indoors mm -hmm. and um it just it, it just it's impossible to describe the 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 sonic effect that happens <laughs> there um and, and so sometimes it's inside sometimes it's outside in the corner and you can't do it they they'll like beat like beat on the glass you know to try to get it to like go away and it just it amplifies throughout the whole building and the same thing happens um sometimes when there's birds in certain areas and it's just it sounds like they're inside and <laughs> You can't not hear it. So that's actually one advantage to being open because it is like a little less quiet. <laughs> so you yeah. can uh, kind of not have to hear those things. Except when they have large programs and lots of little kids screaming. So. Well, I know. And that's the other thing that we, we I mean, now we don't have programs. Right, right. So, yeah. But we were reflecting, we were remembering back to the days when we would open the door between tech services and the library and just like this roar of sound would come through and we'd look at each yeah. other, and like, oh my gosh, you know, we'd just like quietly close the door and be like, we'll go out later. But I mean, they're having so much fun. It's all, you know, it's great. Yeah. There would be, you know, dozens and dozens of kids there for programs and it'll be really great when it can be that way again um but it's just a completely different environment in there now than it was because that was our primary kind of that was our yeah our audience so yeah i i was always surprised when i went to that building how loud it could be like we have the same number of kids on the second floor of the library but the sound just it's not the same <laughs> acoustically, acoustically that building is not probably designed for for that um, not a lot to absorb the voices of children. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm drinking out of my Schitt's Creek mug this morning. Ooh. Um, it's they more so well. They did so well at the wards. I yeah. know. That's what I was going to say. The world is falling apart around us and I'm dying inside is what my mug says. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was just going to say, if you saw that, they swept the Emmys. So that was wonderful. I really love this show. And um, I was very proud of them and happy to go for like no wins to winning literally everything. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Looks like Liz is a fan too. So yes. yes. Have you ever watched it? I, I, I couldn't remember your name for a second. That was horrible. <laughs> I watched the um I've seen like half of the first season and then like episodes here and there. Um I started watching it again this week. I'm like, oh you know I I need to watch yeah. it. Now's the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so. that they're going to put the final season on Netflix at the beginning of October, I saw. So it'll all be there. And yeah, yeah. Moira is just really yeah. just so delightful. And Catherine O'Hara is so talented. And I remember reading an article. Um, and I can't I actually can't remember if it was, it was either Daniel Levy or Catherine O'Hara about one of their characters saying that they didn't have to spend. Hey, Mary. Um, they said that they didn't have to spend a bunch of exposition time on oh, we miss our old life so much. 
by being able to funnel it all through their costumes. Like the way that Moira looks, the way that David looks, both of them dress, especially Moira, but David too, dress in a way that's like, it's just so obvious. They're so out of place. They can't let go of anything of their old life and they don't have to even mention it because they look so absurd in yes. their new setting. And I thought that was very, it's because they want costumes, I believe as well. And so, um, I don't know, it's really well done. So I'm, I encourage everybody to watch it, but I'm celebrating with my Moira mug today. You know what? Catherine O'Hara has that weird um, condition where all of her internal organs are flipped. They're, it's like mirror image of where they're supposed to be. You know the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest. I, do. I love, I love like, random facts and I love um medical weirdness so you put those two together <laughs> I know it's so it's so funny it's like I just didn't I just did not expect you to say that you haven't watched a whole lot of the show but you do know about the orientation of her organs yeah so <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> So I, I was thinking this morning um, about, do you know what we were doing a year ago today? October? No. It, no, September? No. Mm -hmm. We were, well, right now we were probably in a session, but when I was thinking about it this morning, we at that time we were probably eating bagels in the Duke Energy Convention Center um, at the Ohio Library Council conference. Yes. Um, yes. And, a year ago today, things were so different. Um, Weren't they though? Yeah. At a huge conference, all of those people packed in the, those chairs were so small and we were stuck so close to people. You guys in the comments, in the days of COVID. <laughs> people watching, the chairs at this, at this conference center were connected. So they were very narrow chairs to begin with, but then there was no way to pull your chair forward, push your chair back, wiggle a little bit apart from anybody, no arms. So not the arms would have made it better, but there was no division, nothing at all. And they were all hooked together and the rooms were small and you were just like, I was, mm. it was miserable. It was, and, it was a good conference. They had good speakers. It was good information. I was miserable the entire time because I was so uncomfortable. And I mean, I really wanted this to be about like, oh, we missed the things we used to do. <laughs> was a severe lack of coffee at that conference. And um, that was very disappointing. And it increased the misery level, I think. Every coffee shop closed before 3 p.m. in Cincinnati. Every single one around the conference center. And I am just like, how do you have all of these librarians together? and no coffee without someone getting murdered. I don't know. It was it was it was it was bad. It was tough. It was tough. They could they could have done better in that coffee. And Liz says it sounds like a great conference. It it really it it was it was. It was great to go and and we're definitely gonna miss doing those things for a really, really long time, I think. I think it's gonna yeah. be a long time not just before conferences happen, but before we're really capable of going to those things again. And but it was it was it was really it was really good, but uh, yeah, there's two things that stand out. And it was the fact that we were sitting there eating those bagels with no, oh wait, there was a, th there was a third thing. Um, despite the hotel being like four conference people, the internet was ex essentially non-existent. So um, even though the hotel was like designed, everyone there was at a conference, you know, it had all these rooms and stuff like that. Um, we really had no internet. So there had been no internet, no good coffee and we had to sit in those tiny chairs. So probably this morning, probably at this time, we were both very cranky. But then I think we probably kind of got used to it and then moved forward and enjoyed ourselves. Me? Cranky? Allison, I don't know what you're talking about. I am like a joy to be around. I am nothing but light and happiness. I am never cranky. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face when I say that. I I like to very vehemently complain about the things that I don't like, and then I let it go. But that, that's, complaining. that's the process. You, you got to complain about it, and then you can let it go. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, that was really that was a good time though, and and that's one of those things that I don't know if uh, people necessarily know that. Um, 
there are lots of conferences for librarians, more than anyone could ever attend in a year, you know, um, you got to really pick and choose. And even then you're lucky to, you know, get to go to something. But um, yeah, there's actually a lot of conferences and events for librarians to attend because one thing about libraries is we really like to share we like to share ideas and like to share the workload. No reason for everybody to do the same work. If one person can do it and share it, then we're all going to. So that's one thing about libraries and librarians. Yeah. Is that we it. do absolutely love to share. Not only do we share our books with you, we share ideas with each other. So, yes. <laughs> and and, and, and okay. Beth, Ruth is, is, is outing me in my need for coffee and how you don't want to be around me when I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. Here in Cincy is fun. We, we did have a good time in Cincinnati and we walked around and we got to see a couple different things, but. Yeah. It was, it was good. And I, yes, it was fun. It was fun for sure. It was just. I was very impressed with the very large Kroger building. I was, I forgot about that. I actually walked and visited that Kroger on that final day when we had a little bit of time. I walked all the way down to that. Kroger. It was a multi-story Kroger, you guys. Yeah. I believe it was some kind of a, and they have a Kroger headquarters there. And I think it was, might've been the, the Kroger headquarters. I walked inside, I walked around it. Um, and then I left and I was, yeah. <laughs> I was so I took a, to a second floor of the grocery store. It was multi-level and I took a picture of it. And now, I mean, <laughs> things are just so different now. All so the stuff different. We, and the Cincinnati public library, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, they had a great library and a great library bookstore. Dropped a lot of money at their library bookstore. <laughs> I liked um, up in the the reference section, they had the really old newspapers. So they would show, I think it was 100 years ago, the front page from 100 years ago. Um, and every day they would turn it so that you could see the next day's front page. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really neat. I mean, being the main branch of a public library in a large city, they have a lot of really neat they own a lot of neat things. And yeah, they had those display cases that showed, I remember that and they had a few other little displays like featured. I feel like they had something like moon landing inspired fashion, I think was one of them. Cause it was the moon landing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really interesting. Chris says that their theater is awesome too. We didn't make it to the theater during that visit, but. No, it was, but yeah, the library was really cool. Um, so if anyone has a chance to ever go there, it's also the one that inspired the movie, The Public. Um, yeah. And some of it was filmed there. Liz asked, didn't I go for the grand opening of a Kroger back in Bloomington, Krogucci? It was the nicest Kroger, that's what we called it. Um, yes, I did. I was there before they opened that day. I got a swag bag. I walked, this, Kro okay. So I like grocery shopping. We won't talk about it, Leah, you hate it. Um, but this Kroger is one of the biggest Krogers in the country. And um, they revamped it. And when they did their grand opening, they had all kinds of insane stuff there, including a person in a black and white shirt and a beret white riding a bicycle with baguettes in the back around the store. They had um, a live mu pick your own mushroom. It was, I know there was this big like thing of like the dirt with mushrooms growing in it. You could pick your own mushroom. They had um, like all these watermelon carvings. They definitely had like octopus and squid, like a whole thing there that was like in the new fish display. It was really impressive. But yes, it was like uh, it was like eight degrees outside. It was really, really cold. And I got there very early in the morning and I got one of the swag bags full of Simple Truth products. And I got to see the woman with the baguette bike and it was really, really satisfying. So yes, Liz, I did go. Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, and Mary said this, this is her new favorite Allison fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Mary said she was told that they were the third largest Kroger in the country. So yeah, that sounds about right. Because fun fact for everybody here, all three of us, me, Leah, and Mary all went to Indiana University for our mm -hmm. master's in library science. So yes, we did. another fact that some people may not know about librarians is that they have master's degrees. Yes, we are not volunteers. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we also don't, don't get to sit around and read all day, which is another common misconception about what we do at work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you ever hear of a job where you get to sit around and read all day, let me know. I will sign up for that. I will be there. I will fight for it. Give me that job. Chris wants to know the oldest newspaper that our library has a copy of. I think the microfilm goes back to, I want to say 1817. 
but it's very, very, very spotty back then. But don't quote me on that. I would have to actually go back and look at the microfilm. Um, but and I, like physical papers, we don't keep. No. We have um, the Lancaster Eagle Gazette back about six months until we get it on microfilm and then it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't keep old newspapers. Yeah, because we our point is the access to access the information and the most uh, efficient way to access that information space wise is going to be on microfilm after, you know, once it's available. So we're not an archive to keep, keep the old paper stuff. We don't yeah. have the space or the resources. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, Liz says she was on a call the other day where she was wearing an IU sweater during a call with Ohio state and it was, oh, oh yes. Any, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio State fans like to comment on anything about sports in Ohio State. Uh, it's just kind of a in your in your DNA here. We do have copies of the Sesquicentennial Gazette, um, but that one is uh, uh, when it's like 150 years old. They do go back a lot farther, <laughs> and she's in Colorado wearing an Indiana University sweater. Absolutely. Liz, don't you, now we're, we're bringing you into the show, don't you have a lot of Ohio State um, people where you live in Colorado? Isn't that like some strange thing I remember you telling me about? Let me know. Let us know. Um, is there an outpost, an Ohio State outpost in Colorado that we all should travel to at some point? <laughs> and you can put us up. Um, okay, yeah, collectible edition of one of the anniversary Eagle Gazette. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Judith says that Baltimore has local newspapers going back to the 1800s. So, yeah. So, yeah, there are several Ohio State people there. Yeah. It's weird, like, Ohio people, like, there end up being pockets of them yeah. everywhere. Like, you go to North Carolina, you meet a lot of people who are originally from Ohio. Yes. And it's, it's, it's weird how, like, that happens. The number, like, of times, the number of times that my family went on vacation to North Carolina, my brother wearing his Golden Gales something or other, and like the person next to us in the re in line at the restaurant was from Lancaster, was kind of astounding. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's a popular travel place, so. I went to Hawaii and we started talking to the people who were sitting, we went snorkeling one day. We we're sitting on the boat talking to the people who were next to us and they talk, They were talking about, you know, oh, they had just been in Ohio. And we asked them where, they're like, oh, you'll, you, you don't know it's a little town. I'm like, we're from a little town too. They're like, oh, we were in Shadyside. <laughs> we're like, well, we're, we're from Bel Air, which if you know that they're right next to each other. It's like, yeah, just That's down the road. That's bizarre to meet in oh. Hawaii. Right. <laughs> um, so Liz says, this is what I was remembering. One of her bosses was a lifelong Ohio State um, person and would go to meet up at bars. So she, I remember there being like an Ohio State bar. She told me about when she moved the, where where uh, there'd be a bunch of Ohio State fans watching the game. And that's the thing. I think that's how you find them is if there is a pocket of people, they will be watching the game somewhere. My my cousin lives in um, Arizona and she'll post pictures of well, not anymore because COVID. But she would post pictures of people watching the games, the OSU games at bars down there. Yeah. No, it'll yeah. be a while. Oh, yeah. So, Chris, yeah, so a lot of OSU fans, yeah. <laughs> Ohio State in Arizona, apparently. Well, you know. I'm going to save one leg there, Chris. <laughs> well, it sounds like there's other places we could live and still retain our Ohio identity. <laughs> so, we were talking about things that, like, you don't expect. Maybe people don't know about libraries or whatever, or just like funny things that. Yeah. So, another thing that's going on here in Fairfield County is this Trail of Scarecrows. Um, we did this last year and it was pretty successful. Just all, you know, you're any local business organization, whoever is invited to make a scarecrow. And then there's a map and you can travel throughout the county and visit the scarecrows. And some of them are really, really good. And it was really fun. You vote. Are so creative. Oh, I know. They're so creative. And so you get to vote on different regions of Fairfield County, you know, what's the best one there. And so this year we're all participating, all the branches of the libraries and, um, so for ours, it's just, again, one of those funny things that like if you walk into it, it might not be what you expect to have happen at the library. Uh, two of our 
um, two of the staff members at Northwest, one was lying on the ground and the other was tracing the other with a crayon to do the outline of our scarecrow, which is going to be a mermaid. Um, <laughs> she has a, you know, her legs to draw the outline of the mermaid. And um, <laughs> I mean, you gotta trace something. And so that mermaid though, actually, I don't wanna, I'm sorry for spoiling it if anyone was wanted to be surprised by what you would find in the Northwest garden, but it is going to be a mermaid and she looks really wonderful. However, she's very big and she's not supposed to go in the garden yet. So they keep moving her around and I keep being startled by her. I go in the back door. She's taller than I am. She's got like the <laughs> hair, which is very, you know, mermaidy, but like I jump, I see her. And last night, Leah, I had a dream about her. She was in my dream. I don't remember what happened, but I remember seeing her face and her raffia hair. And I was like, you guys, this contest can't come fast enough. I need her not in my workspace. <laughs> Oh, oh, that is, yeah, that would be scary to keep stumbling upon. I, they put her in Tara's office, but when Tara was on vacation, so when Tara came back and opened her door, there was this giant mermaid, and that was fine for Tara, but I kept walking out and then being surprised by her in her office, because I'm like, I don't know. Anyway, I'm very easily startled, but uh, she's a very large mermaid. <laughs> so what are you guys making, or is it a surprise? I don't know. I'm not in charge of that, so no. I don't know what we're making. Yes. Uh, Chris wants to know what we, how we feel about the Marion the librarian stereotype. I don't know. Uh, I don't think any of the librarians I know fit the librarian stereotype. Um, we're, <laughs> although I, I, I do know someone who uses that as her fake identity <laughs> on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Mary, the librarian, what wasn't she our scarecrow at Maine last year? Um, I think maybe. I think she was. Man, you were not invested in this scarecrow thing at all, were you? <laughs> I think she was. I think she was the main library scarecrow. I think. Um, she may have been. Laura is making Hagrid as their scarecrow, and I cannot wait to see that. It's gonna. Be, I know it's gonna be good, Judith. It's gonna be so good. Um, yeah, I think as librarians, we fit other true librarian stereotypes. Um, marrying a librarian is a true librarian stereotype in, in real life, certainly in media or culture, but not. I, I, none of us wear our hair in buns. None of us, <laughs> you know, the, like there, there's a couple, um, librarian stereotypes. You've got your, like your bun wearing shusher. Um, none of us do that. Although I do sometimes have to tell people they need to be quiet. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and none of us that I know of, I could be wrong though, wear glasses chains. Although <laughs> that's because I don't know that many of us need to take our glasses off ever. At least that's the case for me. If I had to take them off, I'd 100% wear a chain because then I'd lose them if I had to take them on and off, but I wear them all the time. So. Helen constantly loses her glasses. Maybe I need to get her a glass. Should I get her a commemorative? She's probably not watching this. Should I get her like a commemorative chain, you know, and some type of, you know, librarian themed glasses? Yes, chain? absolutely. <laughs> One thing I will say is I've got um, like a librarian mask, like with mask, uh, face masks. So, and you can also wear the chains for your face mask. So if you're taking it off, it holds them. Um, you, it, could, it could go that route that's wear it too but yes. I, that's one of the cute things about the masks because you can get them themed and like I have been very tempted to um get some 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 yeah some librarian face masks yeah I know I've definitely looked at a lot of them um they're just more expensive than regular ones um yeah. I've seen a lot of a lot of good book and reading and library ones. Um, I saw some very cute. I just, ugh, I love know. Mo Willems, the pigeon, and I've yeah. seen pigeon masks that I would really like. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> librarian from Ghostbusters. <laughs> I like that. Um, you, unfortunately, you're in the back, so you don't get a lot of those like I don't get to show off usual questions. Yeah. And I don't get to show my masks off either. I just wear them for myself. No one gets to see them. Right. So 
I think talking, we were talking about like unusual stuff, like you didn't expect to come in and find the mermaid. Um, <laughs> one day I had a patron in, he came in, he needed to, to print some stuff off. And he he's like, you don't by any chance know how to tie a tie, do you? I was like, yeah, I do. He, and he pulls a tie out of his pocket and he's like, I'm printing my, my resume. He's like, I've got an interview in 15 minutes and I don't know how to tie this tie. I'm like, well, I only know how to tie it if like it's on me. I can only use it. like I'm like, you mind if I put it on? He's like, oh, take it. So I took oh my god. I took his tie and there I am at the reference desk tying his tie for him. Oh. And you know, then I loosened it off and get, took it off and gave it back to him. But it was like I didn't expect to answer that question today. It's just oh, like, that's wonderful. It that's was really great. great. It was one of those. I did something good today, but it was right. not at all what I expected to ever do as a librarian. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! That's a really that's very nice. Yeah. Um, I wish I wish you would have followed up and we would have found out. Did he I get? Know, this? I hope he got this job. I know it was probably a combination of his excellent resume and his excellent excellent, excellent knotted tie. <laughs> um, Mary well, says, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Mary says, between the lot of us, there's enough tattoos and different hair colors that we're doing our solid best to destroy any stereotypes. And I would add, actually, that's the stereotype of librarians now is wild yeah. hair colors and tattoos, honestly. But sensible shoes. But sensible shoes. Crazy exactly. hair. Sensible Crazy shoes. hair and sensible shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reverse up. I've got very boring hair, but I usually have very wild shoes. <laughs> but that's because I don't walk around the library all day. I sit at my desk. Right. You're lucky. <laughs> The the one one I don't wear heels often, but like one time I was like, oh, these shoes are great. I'm gonna wear them to work today because I'm I'll just at my desk. Someone called off and I got stuck working in the circulation department, so I was on my feet all night. Was, oh no! Oh man, <laughs> I feel like maybe a backup pair of tennis shoes at work might be a good uh, idea. Yeah. Just. Because after after doing that once, you you probably were like just never again. You probably threw all your uncomfortable shoes away. That's probably what I would have done. Get it? It's, I have surprisingly few these days. <laughs> right. so. Oh, you know another very unusual reference question I got one time. This this I think was the strangest question I've I've ever gotten. Um, a guy came in and he tells me the story. But basically it boiled down to, he has no idea where he parked his car the night before and could I help him find it? Oh. <laughs> he, he had, he'd come to town, he was from out of town, he'd come to town, he'd go, parked at a motel, his friend had come and picked him up at the hotel and they had gone out. Somehow during the night, he and his friend had gotten separated and now he needed to find out which motel he had, parked his his vehicle at <laughs> so i am on the internet pulling up pictures of the local motels and motels i'm like do any of these look familiar to you <laughs> so trying to help them find out where he parked his car the night before oh my gosh that is that definitely has to be one of the stranger ones did did he did did he find it um he thought it might have been one of two places so he was going to check those two. Oh my gosh poor guy <laughs> I mean, I'm to come to the library, right? Um, we answer all kinds of questions that people will never, never think that we would. And Chris wants to know uh, what prompted us to be a librarian. Um, I started working in the library as a whim, on a whim. Like it was like there was a job open at the library, and I liked to read, so I took the job. But it really was answering reference questions that like did it for me. Like that little bit of detective work, it's you know scavenger hunt, finding the right answer. I, I just, I loved that. And it was like, I was sold after a short time. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I'm really, it's the managing and providing access to information. It's the, it's the retaining and organizing and keeping available <laughs> to everybody. I used to want to be a historian for when I was in like a teenager, but then I realized that what I really wanted, what was really interesting to me was the documents and the information and not really 
not really doing the work to report on it, but but truly like managing that and having that accessible. So that kind of turned into an idea about archives. And then that turned into actually, I don't really want the exclusivity of archives. I want the openness of the public library. Um, but my I've had very few jobs that weren't in the library. Um, I started working in my college library and government documents my freshman year. And I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. <laughs> Check. I know now. So it was pretty straightforward for me too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, uh, as much as we, you know, don't necessarily have a stereotype or something like that, I do think it's kind of self selecting. Only people who want to do this work are doing it because mm -hmm. it kind of speaks to you. Yeah. It really does. And it's, it's amazing how many people start working in a library, even if they don't like become a librarian they never leave libraries it's one of those jobs that you just you stick with it and um my grandpa called a library oh i like that chris his grandpa called the library the museum of the imagination and oh, yes. i love that i'm gonna have to steal that, that. Lovely. i like that too well that's a good note to leave it on really well, it is so and it's imagination yeah the imagination i like that well, if you're comfortable, come in and visit the Museum of the Imagination. If you don't don't feel great about it, visit us online. We've got all kinds yeah. of ways to still visit that museum with I mean, e-books, audio books. Your side pickup if you're not comfortable coming in. So that's still available to you. So yep. hopefully right. we'll see everybody soon, one day soon. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.